everyone, welcome to Watch It Paint It. In this video, I'm going to start painting Death May Die, and I'm going to start with the main man himself, Cthulhu. Now, in this video, I'm going to be using contrast paints, I think. I've ummed and odd about how I'm going to do it, and I might find it a bit bipolar going through the Death May Die series, and I might keep changing my painting style, but I want to I was just sat at the table playing board games with my daughter and I was thinking, I just want to get this game painted as fast as possible and to the table. And this guy is huge. This is arguably one of the biggest. It's not the biggest. I think the dragons I've painted are bigger than this, but this is, you know, top three huge miniatures and it's going to take quite a lot of time. And I thought about just sort of sun drop painting it with some sprays or maybe contrasting it. And I think for this one, I'll contrast. Let me know in the comments below if you like it, if you dislike it, if you'd like to see a different style, that sort of thing. Keep, keep, keep ideas coming. I can try out a few things. Now I will just mention, I've, I've painted up the smaller Cthulhu wizard, Death Star. <laughs> What's it called? So whatever the little guy who looks like his, his child is. And I was using my red grass game spinner. This is actually the prototype. Um, the real one comes in some sweet packaging like this. And I, for this particular miniature, I think it's quite handy because I'm using contrast just to stick it on there. And then you're sort of contrasting away and you're just spinning it very easily with one finger. Now I'm probably not going to use it on camera because I mean, you can see it only just fits anywhere, and I'm just going to end up wandering off camera. So I'll skip that, but I will leave a link to these below. And there's an affiliate link, and you know, 5% com commission goes to watch it paint it if you are interested in trying out that spinner and would like to support the channel. So let's get on with it, guys. Let's, let's get some paint on this Cthulhu. So as I just mentioned, we will be using contrast paints on this particular miniature, and I'm going to be starting with Skeleton Horde. It's a, a fairly light sort of skeleton bone color really, uh, light brown. And I'm just gonna be covering the, I don't know what you, parts of the wings you'd call this, but basically the wings. I'm gonna be dodging his little baby arms that, and his fingers that are running through the wings, but I'm gonna be doing all of the flappy bit, not, not the fingery parts with this. Again, another Redgrass Games product I'm using. So please use the links below if you're interested in trying out these products and get, getting 5% to us. Don't give all the money to Redgrass Games, but this number two brush is probably my favorite by far brush for contrast. It just holds so, so much. So you can just dip once and paint huge areas. Here I'm going for one thick coat. So it's coming off quite quickly just because of how much I want to apply to the winged areas but I am going to be moving this pooling down here although I do want it to pull a little bit towards the fingers just maybe not quite as much as it was doing there and I'll be working this round moving this paint around all of the the winged areas of Cthulhu so that's this wing the other wing and I'll be doing front and back and I'll also be catching he's got claws on his wings and claws on his hands and while I've got this color out I'll also do those bits too. So about 10 minutes later and I'm done with those parts. I'm just showing you what I've covered here. Most noticeable to that differed was, I forgot to mention his toenails, get those covered as well. And then he's also got sort of webbing stretching between some of his fingers and these smaller bits of wing here, which just don't miss those bits. And then something interesting, oh, that's, that still needs tidying up. Um, what I was going to say is this is sort of flooded down a little bit and I've just poured water on it. Like you can see here, just loads and loads of water, just really, really flooding this area. Then you can slurp some either off of the miniature, which I am I'm doing now. And, but basically you don't need to worry about, well, I'm not going to worry about it too much because I think I want to mix some browns and greens together as I do this miniature anyway, make him look a bit a, dirty, a bit, bit biological a bit you know just natural like these colors blend together i think in the artwork he looks a little bit purple a little bit brown a little bit green so i don't mind that it's got a very thin amount of this skeleton horde over his body anyway that's not going to bother me too much the practice one i did is little brethren the little what what is his name I should have looked it up between takes but yeah he I, I end up painting him all green and then just splatting on some brown just to make him look a bit more realistic, a bit more interesting, a bit more natural. So that is the skeleton horde done for me. And then I'm going to be going on to Militarum Green and it's sort of an army-ish 
green and I'm not even going to wait for that skeleton hoard to dry because I like exactly the same reason I don't mind there being a bit of brown on his bum. I don't mind if these colours merge a little bit. Having said that, I am going to avoid the wings and the fingernails till last and I'll be careful around them. But I'm going to start working my way around. I'm going to leave his tentacles. Although in the artwork, I think they're like mostly green with a splash of purple. I have a new purple contrast paint and I would like to try it. And I think this miniature, miniature, is this even count as a miniature when it's this big? I think it's going to be a bit boring if I just do all this green as well. I, I found the, the littler version. I did his tentacles light brown and then I dry brushed on a blue just to give it some color and just make, I thought it made it look quite good. And it was just more interesting, the brown tentacles. I think in the artwork, again, it had like this slight hint that they were a little bit bluish. This one's got a slight hint they're a little bit purple. And I think for this particular one, I'm going to I'm going to use the contrast purple, see how that comes out, and then probably tone it down a lot with some washers, make it look mostly like, I guess, mostly greeny browny with this hint of purple. But I'm going to achieve that by starting with purple and just darkening them down from the from the ends upwards until I get the look at look I'm going for. So yeah, here we go, Militar and Green. We're just gonna go all the way around all of his skin. So I'm just gonna avoid his tentacles, avoid the wings and the fingernails that I've already done. Everything else is gonna be in green. Doing this before I go to bed, recommend that to you guys because you're gonna want this to dry. So, and he's huge. So if you're copping along with this, get this paint on at a point where you can just leave it for an hour or so. That will be my tip for this. It's quite well known, I think, if you watch the channel a bit, I do not enjoy painting large miniatures. And I don't actually think it's lot, the fact they're big that I dislike. I think it's when they're, they're big and all one single colour. Like, I often paint dragons that are all red or all green or all something. And I just get really, really bored painting it because you're painting the same thing over and over. And then you're washing the same thing over and over. And then you're highlighting the same thing. And... And at that scale, you're talking hours for each tiny bit. And once you've done a little bit and gone, yeah, that looks cool. I don't need to do it for hours. And I'm finding the contrast on this just really therapeutic, knowing that once it's dry, this is just done. And honestly, like, it's, I'm not going to win any competitions, but I can already tell it wouldn't be that far off as good as I could paint anyway. Like, I, I would just get so frustrated painting this. And I cannot be the only painter out there, especially watching tutorials on the internet then, who who also doesn't like, you know, I'm not the only person who doesn't like painting huge repetitive miniatures. So hopefully this is showing you a really nice, quick, and I can assure you therapeutic, like it's just nice. It's easy to apply. It's super watery. You just got to be a bit careful around these fingers here, but I'm not, I'm not particularly struggling to get the brush in anywhere because it just flows and it's just like blurt blurt in that blurt in there these bits on the back were a little bit hard to fill the pots with water you can see a few white bits but i'll probably have to tidy up a few of those once it starts to dry but that's it and other than that i've just really enjoyed doing it so i would recommend if you're if you're looking for quickness and you're not using contrast pretty sure the army painter has got like an army green spray color primer so that's going to save a whole bunch of time as well so that's another alternative if you're if you care about the speed at which you can paint this miniature even on these finger wing parts you can see i'm not switching down from this size two red grass games brush one because it this miniature is huge two because the brush is fairly accurate even with contrast paint and three because i don't mind it mixing a little bit and blurring the the lines between them and making it look a little bit more organic. His belly's remarkably hard to get into. I've just got some paint on my brush and I'm just wiggling it behind his tentacles. Just notice it feels like I'm just tickling his belly, just giving his belly a little stroke like some sort of, sort of fussy cat. And there he is. The green's going well, so I'm just going to leave that to dry overnight now and uh, get back to it tomorrow. So I've been to sleep. This has dried overnight and this is how we're looking now. I'm, I am already pretty happy with this. This is you know, it's got a lot of highlight and a lot of shading, the middleware between for us. It's just done so much work. And honestly, how much better would it have been if I painted it properly? 
given my my level of a painter now for the next bit you'll see that i've got some of this green on his tentacles i didn't mean to this is done in wraith bone primer i probably should have mentioned that at the beginning the citadel one that's designed for contrast paints whether you actually need it or not i'm still a bit up in the air about but what and, and I, so you can buy some of this matching paint to to touch this back up afterwards i don't actually have any what i do have is army painters crushed skull and i'm finding it like it's not perfect match but it's close enough and it it will do and we'll be able to see yeah you'll be able to pay attention when we're finished if this bottom bit looks worse than any of the other pieces given that it's a not the ton contrast primer and b not even the same color i'll just touch up these tentacles get them back to the, the base ish color as mentioned i am trying out a purple for these tentacles now I'm not 100% sure they're purple in the artwork, but it's a bit grungy, a bit grimy, a bit difficult to see anyway. And they de definitely want some colour. And from that star spawn that I painted, I, I, I know that it looks a lot better since I added a, a hint of blue to that. So I'm going to just start with purple on this. And then I think I'll grime this down. I'll green it. I'll brown it. I'll do something to it to make it look a little bit more interesting. But I'm going to start it being more interesting by making a nice vibrant purple color and go from there now i've never ever used this before this is shyish purple another contrast paint these are all going to be i think i'm going to do like the whole miniature in contrast paints that's not true i'm going to add a splash of detail towards the end that won't be contrast paints because i think these contrast paints are just a tool and they're a nice way of getting a quick base coat on and then you can really really take them to the next level adding details in with original normal paint so yeah, I'm not quite sure. Never used this purple before. I don't know if I want to go super thick or thin, how dark it's going to be. My experience, the darker colors are normally a bit thicker than the lighter colors. So you might want to do two thin coats, but I'll go for a medium coat and we'll see how that comes out. So I'm going to cover all of these tentacles. And with that, purple's all done. Not bad. Some of it's really, really hard to reach. And right in the center, there's a bit of white. I'm not going to go too far to get that bit because I think if you're viewing Cthulhu at this angle you're crazy but yeah some of it's a little bit difficult to reach be careful make sure you try not to catch any on his skin and if you do clean it off straight away you can see this is glistening with water because I caught a little bit just flooded it and it's it'll be good as new once this is dry so I'm just gonna I'll leave this to dry for a while now do not call me psychic I'm not implying I am but did I or did I not say the purple is going to be quite dark by the end of it having just cracked open the paint and never using it before but having said that, I also said I was going to add some browns and some greens to darken it down anyway. So I think it's actually just randomly done pretty much what I had in mind. I just wanted it to be a bit brighter at the top. You can see some of the contrast has highlighted itself for me and it's come out. That's how I wanted it to be in the lightest places, but it's maybe just not quite enough. I don't know. I was about to show you how to highlight this up, but now I'm thinking that's pretty much exactly what I wanted it. Just like this hint of purple. So I'm kind of changing my mind now, but I was about to use some of Army Painter's pale flesh, this sort of pinky purple, quite muted pink, just to add some highlights. But looking at through the camera, I'm now massively ch changing my mind. I don't know if I want to. I think that's possibly e exactly how I want it. Ah, what I was, oh, so I'll change, change of plan. What I was also going to do is highlight up some of the, what do you call these? Like, they're, they're disgusting. These holes. I'm glad I've not got that fear of holes that some people suffer from as much as I do find this semi-disgusting. I'm just going to put a thin layer of that pink pale flesh on every single one of these circles, I think. It's just going to take some time, but I think that's just going to add a little bit of colour to it. it. There's a hint of purple in the artwork, I think. That's where I got this purpley idea for his tentacles from. And then it just looks like he's got a little bit of purple on some of them so let's let's go with that let's add, add some color i'll just show you the miniature before miniature massager before i go any further ahead for the for the sort of 30 minutes work this has taken i'm pretty impressed with it so before i go ahead and ruin this i'm just going to get some watered down pale flesh on a this is my double zero brush now so i need some accuracy and i'm just really going to try and add a thin layer that's actually gone on a bit thick it's pulled wipe that off with my hand just a very thin layer that's better using the side of my brush if i can and just add a bit of purple to the mix can you see that it's very subtle but i think once i've done them all 
A, it'll be slightly less subtle because there's going to be loads of them. But it's just going to add that little bit of colour to Cthulhu and just make him a little bit more interesting than this huge amount of green. But if you just want a green one, just skip this step and it's also going to have taken you way less time. So I'm just going to go around very carefully trying to use the edge of my brush just to catch all of the sides of these little holes. And that's probably going to take me more time than the rest of the miniature has taken to paint so far. So I'll be back in about 40 minutes, I suspect. Right, guys, I have coloured each opening to every one of those holes. Really do hope you don't have trypophobia. But yeah, it's added a lot to the, the miniature. It's added a lot of detail. I mean, if you don't like it, don't do that bit. I think it, it adds to it. It did take a long time, though. Not going to lie about that. But I think it takes it, it now doesn't quite look as contrasty anymore. It looks like, it's, it's what I always say, contrast is a tool. Once you start adding some details to the miniature, you can make it look really swish. I'm going to do a little bit of dry brushing. I think his face here should be a little bit pinky. And I might catch a little bit on these tentacles. I'm still not sure, guys. I don't know if I should be doing that. If you're not familiar with dry brushing, just get some paint on a dry brush. This is Citadel's small dry brush. I'm going to just work it a little bit into the bristles. This paint's quite wet, actually. It might not work super duper well, but... Basically, then just wipe off as much of the paint as you can. So there's just a teeny tiny bit left on the brush. And then I'm just going to scrape it and allow that to catch all of the raised parts of the miniature. And as I mentioned, mainly on his face, I'm just pinking it, purpling it up. And I'll catch a little bit on the tentacles towards his mouth as well. Just again, just a bit muty pink this. So it's just adding a dusting really. Just changing the colour around his mouth. And as I said, I think as it goes down the miniature, I actually want the tentacles to be darker further down, so I'll leave very, very light brushes here just to add a little splash of different colours into these tentacles, just a little bit duller. I think that's I think that's about all I want. Just get his face a little bit pink, blend it up a little tiny, tiny, tiny bit, like so. That's it. That's all the pink I'm going to do, I think. I've told a lie. I'm going to dry brush these little lumps and bumps at the bottom. They're not holes, so I didn't draw around them, and I, but they are highly textured, so I'm just gonna just catch the the dry brush on those to add the highlights. Just a little bit, just a little bit at the bottom. Get a little bit on this shoulder one as well then to mimic the same color. Again, super lightly, just adding a splash of color. Otherwise, this guy's just a big green blob, and I think he wants a few just slightly different colors mixing in just to make him look a bit organic something like that and on the back no we're safe while i'm just carrying on with dry brushing i'm just going to use a little bit of army painters this is plague skin but it's necrotic flesh and it's a very very pale green and i'm just going to use this to dry brush up some of the most raised parts of cthulhu so around his face just lightening it up just a splash over his eye lids up up the middle of his face that sort of thing just and again i'm just going to get his shoulder just going to apply this to some of the most raised bits just to add a slight variation in the, the sort of skin skin tone which hopefully is just going to make it look a little bit more exciting a little bit more interesting probably mix in some browns after this so i'm going to work my way around and just really catch the most raised bits so his knuckles here where else will we be doing his biceps sticking out a little bit there and just remember to go sort of against the grain he's got these sorts of strands running across him highlight those up off of the rest of his body get his shoulder on this side just a little bit dustier a little bit of a different skin tone this whole thigh on this side as well as his kneecap a bit on the bits of his bum you can get to back of his calf as well sum up his baby arms on the back just on, catch the most raised bits again that's all i'm doing with this dry brush Got two arms catch a bit on that side too so i want to add some just random parts brown just darken it down a teeny tiny bit but i just want to blend it really really nicely so i'm going to use a splash of army painters deep shader the really really dark brown wash but i'm also going to mix in some quick shade wash mixing medium and i think probably want way more of that so probably a quarter of the brown and really 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 heavily watering that down and give that a good stir together using a cheap cheap brush and probably just going to apply this really soft quite big brush i'm going to use this to apply it to so give this a good mix once that's nicely mixed together let's give it a try i'll try it down here so 
as I mentioned, nice and thin. I'm just going to slap it all over here just to try and blend this pink and this green. Just darken it all down a little bit. Just add a bit of natural organic browniness to this. And I'm just going to find various places. The artwork's just got it, this brown and green kind of mixing all over. So I'll put some, put some on his arm here. Just blend it and feather it away from the pool. Something like that. It's just going to add some different elements of colour. We'll get some on this bit here. Blend that in nicely. Same on these strings that are running across him. A bit brown. Gets plenty, I think, plenty on his face. I say plenty, it's just so thin. So use that to blend that pink and the green together. Get this shoulder up here too. And these strands as well. A bit browny green now. Get some on this arm. And just work this round anywhere you'd like. We're going to use some on his back as well, just because he's got a lot of these holes. That's just going to add a bit of brown to those. Darken this bit down a little bit as well. Just choosing some patches. And you guys can do as much or as little as this as you want. Or don't do it at all if you just want him to be quite green. For the most part, the contrast has done a really good job highlighting up the claws. I think these ones on the wings aren't aren't bright enough. I just want an edge highlight down the clawy part of each of these. So I'm going to use Army Painter's Skeleton Bone. Just catch the sharp part of the top of each of these. Just bringing that back up to a really bright highlight. But yeah, if you manage to settle your contrast correctly, you might not need to do this. I think the claws, for instance, are a decent example of that. Even having said that, I still might just add an additional line just down the sharpest bit just to really emphasize the highlight on that piece. And yeah, so I'm just gonna go work my way around all the bone bits. Now I have decided I do wanna highlight up his tentacles a bit, just to add just something more to this miniature. It's just quite greeny, that's it, green. So I've just been out and picked up Grimoire Purple. It's a, a very muted purple. Actually, had I had this at the beginning, I might have done all of the little holes in this color as well. I've done a couple, you might be able to just see a few Come out, have come out a little bit darker. I've just just tried it out, and yeah, it's quite a, a muted dark purple, and it might add a little bit more than just this green to it. it. Depends if you want it subtle or dark. But yeah, I'm going to just try dry brushing this on the tentacles because I do mostly want them to be really really dark. I'm just doing a very very light dry brush across sort of the tips of them just to add a little bit of color and maybe try and make them stand out a bit better off of each other because it's a little bit hard to tell how many are there because they're all a bit blended together. So yeah, I'm just going to lightly catch this purple across the tentacles and just I'm not so much trying to really make them stand out, just, just enough that you can see there's a whole bunch of tentacles when it moves around a little bit. That, and that's probably all I'm going to do to them. Right guys, another day has passed. This is like the most number of days for a very simple paint job I've ever spent. It's not taking a lot of time, it's just spread over a load of days. Having seen it in daylight today, I, I feel like these purple modules aren't dark enough. So I've taken that Grimoire, 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 purple, <laughs> army paint as one, well, and I'm just dry brushing it now back over where I did that pale flesh before. If you want it nice and subtle, the pale flesh still works, but I like my stuff to stand out a little bit more. Also by dry brushing, it is catching some of the some of the folds of his skin as well and it's just making it look like sort of spreading it a little bit and making some of his skin a little bit purple as well which i think is kind of depicted in the artwork so i am i'm liking how that's working so i'm just going to go around and re reapply this darker purple which i think just suits the miniature more i mean the other one's subtler and you'll be able to do some nicer blending from green to purple if you want to attempt that but if you want it a bit more poppy, a bit more obvious in daylight that it's purple, this is how I'm going to achieve that. One thing to note while doing this dry brush, do be careful around the wings because I don't want any purple on that. I don't mind his, scree his skin having a little bit of purple in, but I don't want the browns of his wings to be purpleized. I'm doing the same on these like pussy lumpy bits here. I'm just going to add a little bit of purple to that. I like how the brown wash has, has added these brown patches I'm noticing now, painting back under the lights i'm pretty happy with that and i'm happy with this purple is catching on some of the raised parts of his folds and i'm again i'm happy with it i'm enjoying how this is coming out i think it's mixing up his skin and making it look a little closer to the art as i mentioned with the artwork i think there's just like a few little 
hints of purple on his body. So I'm just doing a final little bit with this. I'm just going to go catch some random places with his skin away from these modules, these holes, and just just add a little highlight of purple to some 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 places. Just mixing up his color tone, and I think it just makes it look a little bit more like the artwork. But by all means, skip this step if you're not into random bits of purple. With all the purple done, it's time to move on to another bit of detailing. I'm going to use in this yellow to add in the Cthulhu's little eyes. He's got quite a lot of them. And I'm going to do the tidying up and the more accurate filling of these ho holes, these eyes, off camera, I think, because it's too far away from my face. Need it nice and close. But he's going to have four eyes down each side of his face. So I'm going to do this in nice, bright yellow. After reasonably carefully painting in the yellows in his eyes, I've added a black slit, just matte black, army paint is matte black, just a, a little slit across, a little line across, horizontal line across each of his eyes, just to try and make them look a little bit creepier, a little bit scarier. And that just leaves me while I've got the black out, and it's just to tidy up the base. Now, I've ummed and ahmed for ages, because I've started making my bases a little bit fancy, as I'm sure. As many of you subscribers out there have noticed, my bases are cooler than they used to be, but this is also still a style of base I recommend, in, especially if, like me, you don't know what to do. So black's gonna just tie this base together, stop you looking at this unpainted, messy bit at the bottom and just bring your focus back up to the model. We'll just, we'll just watch him go from looking decent to, to pretty good just by painting the base in black. Now, having said that, I just, honestly, I couldn't think of how to do the base. I don't know what style would suit the game. I notice it looks like it's played inside and sort of like tile-based, what do I mean, like stone, gray stone-based rooms, but then there was wooden rooms as well. There's all different rooms, so I didn't know how to paint the floor to match that. And, and I didn't just want to put, you know, fake dirt on it and make it look muddy and grassy, and that's quite a nice, easy win as well. So I think for now, just going to paint it black so you guys can see how it looks all finished up. And bear in mind, this is one of the easiest things to do, quickest things to do to your base, and it is going to look so much better once the base is finished. So let me know in the comments below, though, if you've got any amazing ideas for how I might want to paint these guys going forwards in this set. And with that, that is Cthulhu completely finished. I am decently happy with that result for the amount of time that took, probably well under an hour in total. There's a lot of time waiting for it to dry and I sp spread it over a couple of days, but that's going to do for me. I'm just, one thing I noticed is I wasn't in love with the artwork, so by all means, you know, stray from the artwork, but I think this is fairly accurate to it and it's just not a colour combination I'm in love with. As I mentioned, I had painted the star spawn as well and just in in uh, contrast to each other, I just think this one looks infinitely better. I use contrast paints, I painted it in a very, very similar way. I just think the artwork led to a more exciting miniature creation in the end. I'll just explain the differences here just in case you'd also like Spart, Spart to paint Starspawn as well because it was essentially the same, the skin's the same. The tentacles I did in that skeleton horde color and then I used the Army Painter's deep tone, the dark brown, and I just darkened it down a few times, getting lighter and lighter as I got towards his mouth. And then the final bit was dry brushing Army Painter's deep blue from the tips backwards as well. It just looked a bit blue in the artwork, so I added that in. I've used Crushed Skull, again, sort of a dry brush here. And then if you look really closely, I've darkened it down with some more of that deep shader, just carefully placed in some, some of the crevices just to darken that down. But yeah, dry brushed Crushed Skull and lighter dry brushing onto his skin as, as I've blended it into his onto his chest a little bit more. For his little frills up here, that is Chaotic Red or crushed, not crushed, um, crusted saw, a really dark burgundy red from the army painter. And then I've highlighted that up using army painter's tanned flesh. For the fingers, I guess, on this one, because they look less like fingers to me, they're not hands this time, I did use another contrast paint, and that was that wild wood, that dark brown one. And, that, and I used it for his spine as well. And that's it, guys. That is really the only differences in it. I just think this one came out looking a lot better. But if you like them both, by all means, follow along. Do let me have some links in the, the comments below to check out what you produce. I'd love to see it. 
And just finally, let's have a spin without my hands being completely in the way, uh, being all up in your grill. So we, as I mentioned, not super in love with the artwork for Cthulhu in the game, but I did copy it along because that is the style I like. I like my pieces to match the game. I'm glad again I chose Contrast. I'd completely forgotten how many miniatures Simon Games have and there is 40 three remaining there's 45 in total that is just a huge amount of time to spend painting so where i can get quick wins i i am going to appreciate that and try and grab them if i can with star spawn i did much much more enjoy painting this and i actually painted it with no lamp just one paintbrush it was just that double no sorry not the double the two the red grass games one i used no smaller brush other than a dry brush to do some of the dry brushing later after the fact and i just enjoyed the i think the artwork gave a little bit of a better hint towards what you could achieve with it and i think just a little a few more colors has made it a much more interesting miniature anyway guys you've now watched it go and paint it thank you all ever so much for watching i'll see you again next week Turn off painting time.